everyone, my name is Monica and I'm from GeeksOfGoGo.com and we're here today once again in Anime Magic 2021 and with special guest, voice actress and amazing, a very, very cute person, <laughs> Xanthi. <laughs> Hello and thank you so much for joining me today. I am thank so delighted <laughs> to talk to you because um, I know you've talked a little bit before the interview. I'm such a huge fan of a lot of the anime that you've actually been involved when you, you've been involved in, my gosh, rambling from the top of my head, <laughs> Persona 5, um, Agretsuko, um, Yashahime, um, Princess, Half, Princess Half Demon, um, so many, so many more. Um, it's just been an amazing, you have an amazing list of uh, voice acting um, in, your, yeah. in your portfolio. It's absolutely brilliant. Um, so today in Anime Magic, I know that you did a uh, seminar or like a panel mm -hmm. on how to give advice to folks who want to be in the industry. So uh, can you give us a little bit of a tidbit of like the highlights from that? Yeah, so I, I mostly went into how to break down a script so before you start reading for um, like if you're auditioning from home and you don't have like a a director to kind of like guide you through the audition copy and how you should approach it so that you get really strong reads. So the main focuses that I give on are uh, knowing who you are that you are um, portraying, who it is that they're talking to in the lines, um, what is it that they want from those people that, that they're talking to, and where they are in that moment. So everything that's going on around them. So when, I feel like once you like narrow down those key things, um, when you're reading the script, um, it really helps you in, um, really get into the mind of the character and the world and gives, um, you're able to give much stronger reads once you have all that information. So those, that's mainly what I covered and then we had people go through and read some scripts and then I kind of like um, gave them a little bit of direction based on the information that they gave me so that we could really get into the world that, the, of the copy. Hmm, awesome. So sometimes when you're assigned a, a strip or uh, a part, you haven't, uh, has, has there been a time where you're not really familiar with the characters and you had to like watch the whole thing to kind of like get an idea? And what is your big inspiration to bring that character, uh, let that character come to life? So if I'm told ahead of time what the, the, the project is, like if it's an anime and if there is um, episodes out already, um, then I try to watch it as much as I can. If not, then I try to look, go through trailers or if there's a Wikipedia, I'll try to read through just so I understand um, what's happening in the show. And then I start looking at the characters and um, that I'll be reading for. Um, and then I try to see the, the story through their eyes and then like who they're interacting with. Um, if I don't have that information, like if they just say, oh, okay, we're gonna bring you in for this project, but they don't give any explanation of it, then I just have to go in with an open mind, and then I rely heavily on the director to kind of fill, it, fill me in on all, all that information. And then, like, I'll try a couple lines out to make sure that I'm where they envision the character to be, and then we go from there. Oh. So that's how I approach it. If I, I do research if I can, and if I can't, then I just kind of have to be ready for anything. <laughs> So this is really, really interesting. I, I feel like there's a lot that goes into it. Um, when, before you got started voice acting, like what, what inspired you to become a voice actor in the first place? Was it um, watching anime or? It, it was it's actually, <laughs> yeah. I was already, um, at the time I had already taken some acting classes and I was actually in college for a theater degree when I was watching anime and I thought, you know, that'd be really cool if I could do that I never thought of like voice acting as a, a career that I could do you know it seems like uh, this unreachable thing um, but it, it was be a really cool way to kind of marry my love for anime and also for acting and um, and then a friend of mine told me about this voice acting competition and pretty much I hmm. entered and then that's how I kind of like got into this career that you know I otherwise had no idea how to get into um, I know that you you did some live action stuff as well, right? Mm -hmm. On top of like the anime, which one do you enjoy doing better? Do you like doing the voiceover better? Do you like doing the live action because 
you get to you know kind of show off your your theater chops you know from from your degree. oh like being on camera yeah <laughs> uh i i much rather prefer uh, pr- uh prefer to do voiceover nowadays <laughs> like just because for me it's like it's really difficult for me to uh, memorize lines it's so much it's a lot of work it's a different skill set and also having to understand you know where you are on set if you're make, hitting your marks making sure you're uh, looking at the camera or like you're doing a lot of other technical things um, that I feel like a lot of those skills have kind of <laughs> diminished over the years for me because I haven't kept up the practice and haven't kept up the training for it I've really honed in on like um, aspects of voiceover so um, nowadays I I would greatly prefer voiceover just because I've gotten so much more experience in that area. Yeah. And it's actually kind of a good thing because with the pandemic that just happened, you know, like yeah. it's better to like work and mm-hmm. it's a lot safer, mm-hmm. I bet. Um, how, how was that for you, by the way, like during the pandemic? Like how were you able to navigate through working as a voice actor? Yeah, in the beginning, it was, it was kind of quiet. It was kind of uh, a lot of unknown factors. I already had uh, a recording setup at home that I used for auditions. Oh, that makes it easy. Yeah, so I already had this setup, but then at the same time, I wasn't sure if it was like broadcast quality. Like I had no gauge because I didn't know what they were looking for. I wasn't sure if it would be possible. And I, f- I kind of took the lead of the studios and what they were doing and also like uh, other actors and peers of mine that had the experiences of like being like the guinea pigs <laughs> basically for the studios to test out recording from home and learning from their experiences and then having an idea of what to expect and every studio has like a different setup they have different programs that they use um, to share the script and share the and the video if you're like dubbing um, so it was like a learning process and they understand that it was new for everybody because they were trying to figure it out on their end too. So we were all kind of learning at the same time, um, which um, is kind of nice because then you're not like, oh, I don't know what to do. You know, you're kind of <laughs> freaking out. They were, they were very patient with um, trying to get everybody else up to speed, whatever their process is. So I, every time I set up to record even now from home, I just have to remember, okay, this studio likes to use this program and this program, and I had to record on my end. And so I have to have that set up before a session. And I need to just make sure that I have everything else that I need set up for me and making sure that, you know, my apartment is quiet. Or like everybody <laughs> else, be quiet for two hours because I'm <laughs> recording. Don't turn on the AC. Don't make any noise. <laughs> no barking, no meowing, no. <laughs> exactly. So it's a, that's a, the main thing about recording from home is like external noise that you can't control. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When you have all the other factors set up. But yeah, I think after the first like couple of uh, sessions, um, I really like got into the groove of things. It started to feel almost like I was in the studio again, except for sometimes you have technical hiccups, which you can't control based on like the internet and whatnot. Mm-hmm. But, um, but yeah, I think by now, like everybody's kind of settled into like a groove. Like getting just doing the recording at home. Do mm-hmm. you think that it will be the norm now, or do you think people are just gonna really want to go back to the studio because it's easier? It's kind of a mix of both. I mean, I think it's great in that they because of the remote recordings, um, they're able to like expand into like this like uh, uh, this whole like generation of actors that like otherwise might not have had this opportunity because of where they're located. Because mm-hmm. you have to be in like the areas where like the markets are. If you want to do anime, it's like a lot of it is centered in uh, California, Texas, and maybe a little bit in New York. But um, but now you don't have to live in those major markets. You can do it remotely. But then on the other side of it, I know a lot of studios would prefer actors to be in the studio because then they can control all the sound quality. The things got a lot smoother because you don't have like the internet issues or other sound issues um also it's just easier when you're like talking like face to face so you can kind of get the director's um intent behind things so i can understand why like they would prefer like the studio um 
studio recordings as, op as opposed to remote recordings. Yep. Um, so your, um, your heritage is Vietnamese, am mm -hmm. I correct? Okay. Vietnamese so, and Chinese. Uh, Vietnamese and Chinese. So how does that influence how you voice your characters? Is it play a big part of it or like mm -hmm. how, how do you kind of like use your culture and your um your your heritage for for voice acting oh you know i'm not sure if i've ever really like stopped to think about that i think that um well if i'm talking about anime in particular i'm sure that a lot of like my own like home like upbringing um has you know made me like be a certain personality and I feel like a lot of that has kind of seeped into my characters then that's a lot of like the the stereotypical kind of like shy um kind of meek and like um very uh sweet kind of characters mm -hmm. yeah. and but I think uh culturally um it's really great when I get to play characters that are uh written to be Asian so I can kind of bring that kind of background with me to those characters. So I can be like, oh, okay, I think this is how they would respond because of like the, the culture differences here. Mm -hmm. or, and I've also um, had the opportunity to study abroad in Japan. So I kind of oh, learned wow. a little bit of like the customs there. And like, so that helps me to understand a lot of like very um, Japanese cultural things in anime in particular. Mm -hmm. So I can be like, um, if, we're going through and um, doing a scene and like the director's like, I'm not sure what's happening here. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, this is what is happening because of this kind of cultural aspect. That That's I, interesting. Just from like the little background that I know, I can't claim to know everything, but yeah. I can be like, okay, I know this little tidbit because it's, um, you know, based on like how they live and things like that. So like, I, I think it just kind of helps if I can add in like that kind of information for characters and also kind of under everybody else to understand as well I think that that really gives you an edge with the uh, voice acting since you've mentioned that you know a little bit about the culture like a lot of the anime of course comes from Japanese culture and whatnot mm -hmm. do you think other voice actors would benefit from learning the culture and being immersed in it before they start um, doing voice acting um, I think it definitely helps uh, on a project to project basis. Mm -hmm. So I think like if you're working on a dub, say from like Russian into English, I think it helps if you understand a bit of the culture, if you know a little bit of the language, it definitely helps just so that, you know, when you're reading through it, okay, I understand the emotional context between the lines here because I kind of know the language and the culture a little bit. So I can kind of convey that in my read as well, instead of just saying the words that are there. It's like, they're saying this, but they mean this underneath. And so I think it helps when you kind of have that background, if when it comes to like dubbing, or so to speak, if the director is not catching on that little bit of nuance. Awesome. Now I know you're from the West Coast, um, and you've been to Chicago before, but what are your favorite spots out here in Chicago that you go to when you come visit? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, uh, let's see. Uh, so I really liked <laughs> the you know Chicago pizza. It's the thing that everybody <laughs> talks about. Uh, I I really liked the deep had, dish. Yeah, yeah, I had um, Luminati is is really good. Your Donuts <laughs> was good too. I, I, you know, I, think, I feel like those are the two big rival trains, and I'm not sure. Like, if I could choose one or the other, they're both delicious to me. I, I am just a lover of pizza. <laughs> I'm going to swing in a, another curveball for you. Ooh. There's this thing called a, a pizza pot pie. Pizza pot pie. And it's basically this pizza that they flip over, um, and then the cheese just envelopes the whole thing. <gasps> Um, and it's at Chicago Pizza and Oven Grinder. I'm not sponsored, by the way. Um, <laughs> this is not a sponsored <laughs> video, but yeah, that that was another thing to try because it's also kind of like a deep dish, but it's not. But it's like a small personal size. Ooh. Yeah. Um, oh my goodness, <laughs> my poor waistline. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we have a lot of good eats here in Chicago. Mm -hmm. um, so for Anime Magic, you, you know what what have you been enjoying in the convention so far this year? Um, so far, like. The attendees have been really great. Everybody is um, so uh, kind and um, really engaging in the panels that I've done so far. And like, uh, I just really want everybody to have a good time. And everybody is like, 
um, really, really coming in with like a lot of um, respect, especially when it comes to like wearing masks and like social distancing too, which I really appreciate. Um, also like minding everybody else's boundaries. And uh, besides that, like I'm glad that everybody's just able to ha uh, go out, have a good time. Yeah. And also coming out in cosplay. Yes. It's always, <laughs> that's like the, my favorite thing is just seeing all of my favorite characters walking around in real life, you know? <laughs> So if, um, I forgot to ask you about this question. Out of all the characters that you portrayed being a voice actor, which character really embodies you? Like, when you <laughs> read the script, you're like, oh my gosh, this character is me. Like, they could not have cast a more better person. So which <laughs> character was that for you? Oh, man. Um, so many of them. I'd say <laughs> one of them. Um, off the top of my head is Hanayo from uh, Love Live School Idol Project, mainly because um, she is like this like really really introverted shy uh, character, but she has this huge passion for idols and music, and um, a really big interest uh, to go into that, but she's afraid to because she she's not sure if that's really something that she should do or could do. Um, but um, her friends are all very encouraging of her and she goes into it and she loves it and they have a great time and they're really wonderful. And I feel like that's something that I really related with because I, I like that too. I, I like voiceover. I wasn't sure if that was something that, you know, little old me could do. Um, <laughs> you know, who am I? I'm just a nobody. And, um, well, not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, at the time it was... Um, friends that were that encouraged me to go try it that I am where I am now if they weren't the one if they weren't there I don't know how I would have gotten to this if at all that's amazing well Xanthi I think that's it for for today thank you so much like just to to wrap things up where can people find you and follow you on social media oh uh you can find me on twitter instagram and uh facebook at it's xanthor so, <laughs> I love that. That's amazing. <laughs> well, thank you so much for your time. I hope you enjoyed yeah. the rest of the show. And yeah, looking forward to checking out your new projects down the, thank you so down much. the road. All right, thanks everyone.